we must go now. Papa! Tiago, go with your mother to the trap. Take this. It will always be your guide. Yes, Papa. We will join you shortly. Xavier, the painting! A malediction. This way. Signora, it is too late. Go. Senor, in here. Search them. Of course. Paris in the spring. Passion, romance, L'Amour. I was working in art insurance. It paid the rent, just about. And then, by chance, I met Nico at a private view. You didn't tell me that you were back in Paris, Schoch. We should catch up. Let's have lunch. Nobody move! No, monsieur! Not la malediction. Oh. Stay back. Once again, Paris had shown me her dark side. A brutal robbery, a senseless murder. Nico and I were about to be drawn into a new and terrifying adventure together. The gallery owner was dead. I guess sometimes playing the hero doesn't pay. My company had insured the exhibition, so I had a crime to solve. The cops would be here soon. I didn't have much time. The priest was giving last rites. The door was locked with a keypad. The wires from the camera ran into the room behind. If I could get the code to the keypad, I might be able to shed some light on the crime. This was where the stolen painting had hung. Why that painting? And why kill for it? The stolen painting had an alarm, which should have sounded when the painting was removed. I needed to find out why it hadn't. It was the speaker cone for the alarm. Looked fine to me. So, the alarm wasn't broken. I suspected foul play. I pressed the vibration detector pad. Nothing happened. I pressed... So that was why the alarm hadn't sounded. A wire had been cut by someone who knew exactly what they were doing. This was an inside job. It wasn't the best time to call, Miko. Now wasn't the press but the cut wire had ensured that the alarm wouldn't sound. The bus was balanced precariously on the pedestal. I didn't want to knock it off. The cable for the camera ran into the room marked private. The thief left the pizza box behind. 
Well, no surprise there, pizza. The guy must have been hungry. There was only one slice left. No one had noticed the pizza box fall onto the floor. I decided to leave it alone. It was Hector Lane, France's greatest art critic. For a moment, I thought he was dead, but from the snoring, I guessed he'd only fainted. The street was quiet and upmarket, not the kind of place for an opportunist thief. The room looked like some sort of office for the gallery. I could just see the glow of the CCTV monitor in the corner. You gotta hand it to the French. They know how to take a leak in style. From out here, you couldn't see the stolen painting. This robbery was definitely planned. Excuse me, Father. Yes, my son. I'm George Stobart. My name is Simeon. Is there anything I can do? You can pray for his soul. A senseless murder. On the contrary, this killing makes plenty of sense. What do you mean? A great evil has taken place. This is the work of the devil. What? I am a Dominican priest. I know these things. And now, excuse me, I must pray. One minute I'd been planning dinner with Nico. The next I was talking art theft, murder, and the devil with a priest. He definitely looked better. I didn't want Henri's blood on my hands. In Henri's pocket was a tiny bottle. It was a bottle of Brett. The label claimed it would wake the beast within. There was a small piece of paper. It was too intriguing not to take a look. It read, 2.30 p.m., be ready. Innocent enough until I realized that the robbery took place at 2.30 p.m. There was something fishy going on around here, and it wasn't just the canapes. I quickly replaced the note. Poor guy. I put the glasses back where they were. Best to leave the evidence the way I found it. guy. A cryptic note in a bottle of overpowering cologne. No personal effects or anything else of substance. I definitely needed to check out that office. The bus was balanced for... The alarm on that painting hadn't been sabotaged. So what made the stolen one so special? The poster looked old. I didn't want to touch it. Another painting with a working alarm. Another working alarm. 
But why that painting? Why that particular one? I didn't think there was any need to test another painting alarm. It was clear that only one alarm had been sabotaged. I still needed to figure out the code to that keypad. The stolen painting was called La Maledexio, painted by someone called L. Serp in 1937 and worth just 40 grand. Hmm, a rare glimpse into the absinthe addled mind of the artist. A snip at only 80 grand. That painting was worth way more than the stolen one. So why didn't they take that? Hmm, a rare glimpse into the absinthe addled mind of the artist. A snip at only 80 grand. Just 90,000 for this one. For the discerning connoisseur, a soupçon at 80,000. Time to awaken the beast. <coughs> what? What was that? It smells like... like the 70s. Where am I? You fainted. The nail clippers were monogrammed with the letters H.L. Hector Lane. They must have fallen out of his pocket. Welcome back to the land of the living. I wouldn't exactly call this living. Don't just stand there. Get me something to eat. I found a slice of pizza. I asked for food, boy, not a cardboard simulacrum. Oh, okay, if you don't want it. I didn't say that. Now give it here. Given the circumstances, that was surprisingly acceptable. Uh, now, what's been going on? Oh, Henri, is he dead? Afraid so. Poor chap. Excuse me. Do I know you? Yes, our paths have crossed in the Glees Gallery. Of course, the man with the absinthe. I don't suppose you... Uh, afraid not. Pity. I'm sorry, but I'm having trouble remembering your name. I'm George Stobart. I insured the exhibition. <laughs> I hope you have deep pockets then, my boy. Could I ask you a few questions, Mr. Lane? Fire away. I don't suppose you know the code to that door, do you? Of course. I am, after all, the curator of this exhibition. But I couldn't possibly give you access to the office before the police arrive. I figured I wasn't going to get the door code from Lane by playing nice. I needed to turn the heat up. Mr. Lane, you're really going to have to give me the code to that door. And why, pray, should I do that? Because the way the cops will see it, you're the prime suspect. We both know you're innocent, Mr. Lane, but the cops, well, they may not see things so simply. I might be able to get them off your case, but in exchange, I'd like the code for the office door. But that's preposterous. The police would have neither evidence nor motive. Funny you should mention that.
Someone sabotaged the alarm on the stolen painting. A wire was cut. What? Who could have got into the alarm system? Exactly. It was an inside job, Mr. Lane. You're not suggesting that I... Well, I'm afraid that's the way the cops are going to see it. That's preposterous. How could I possibly have cut the wire? Are these your nail clippers, Mr. Lane? Yes, they have my initials monogrammed on them. Huh. The perfect implement for cutting the alarm on the stolen painting. What are you saying? Well, the alarm was sabotaged, Mr. Lane. It was an inside job. Are you accusing me? How dare you? I had no reason to kill Henri. No motive whatsoever. Okay, but I don't think the cops will see it like that. So, you and Henri, not the best of pals, huh? He and I had a convivial, professional relationship. Trouble is, I'm not seeing many tears, Mr. Lane. Are you trying to accuse me? The cops will be looking for a motive. Just give me the code to the door, and I can help you. You're going to have to try harder than that. This is an inside job for sure, Mr. Lane. The police are going to be very interested in your recent movements. I've been out of town for several days, and last night I retired early. Just saying. You're not going to scare me into giving you that door code, you know. I was onto something here, and I knew it. Lane was sweating. It wasn't pretty. How about it, Mr. Lane? Certainly not. Guilty by way of nail clippers. I've been away from Paris for several days and only got back this morning. How could I have cut that wire? Guilty by way of nail clippers. Sheer fantasy. I hate to say this, Mr. Lane, but you're going to be the number one suspect. So you keep saying... An unusual painting turns up at your exhibition and gets stolen. Doesn't look good, does it? And your point is? The cops are going to ask some awkward questions. But you give me the code to the CCTV room, and I'll do my best to point them elsewhere. I cannot let you into that room. Besides, Henri found La Malédiction, not me. I wondered if there was anything out here I could use to put the heat on Lane. For a moment I contemplated getting on the next train out of here. But a man was dead and I had a job to do. Excuse me. Monsieur? There's just been a robbery at the gallery. Oh, really? You don't sound surprised. All property is theft, monsieur. And all art is property. Therefore, all art is theft. Do you not agree? Uh, well, uh, when you put it like that, it's <clears throat> hard not to. Did you see anybody run out of the gallery earlier? There was a beautiful woman with a camera. She was chasing somebody. Oh, that must have been Nico. You know her? You surprised me. Can you tell me anything about the man she was chasing? I assume, monsieur, that like all of us, he is inherently unknowable. No wonder this guy's cafe was empty. The gallery owner, Henri, was shot dead trying to stop the robbery. Life has no meaning the moment you lose the illusion of being eternal. Right. Did you know him well? Can we ever truly know another human being, monsieur? He spent little time at the cafe, 
Unlike his friend, Monsieur Lane. What do you know about Hector Lane? Lane? Oh, yes. He drinks here sometimes. He slid away last night without paying. Last night? What sort of time? After midnight, for sure. If you see him, give him this bill. And tell him to pay up next time. The check was from last night. But Lane told me he was nowhere near the gallery. This could be the leverage I needed to get the office door code from Lane. Thank you for your consistent indifference, monsieur. Perhaps next time you come, I will give you a coffee. Perhaps not. Take a look at this. What of it? It's your bill from the cafe next door. So? It's dated yesterday. Last night, in fact. You said you were out of town. You sure drank a lot of champagne last night. But you told me that you were away from Paris last night. I hate to say it, but... That sounds like a lie to me. Tell you what, you give me the code of the door and the police need never know. A motive and proof of involvement. Not looking good, Mr. Lane. You are a blackmailer, Stobart. Just doing my job. All right, you have me. The number is 6397. But I admit to none of these spurious accusations. I had the code. The police would be here any moment, so I had to work fast. What was that number again? Six, four... Everyone, hold it right there. Damn it. I am Inspector Navet of the Paris Serious Crime Squad, and I hereby declare this crime scene open. I mean, closed. Now, nobody move, especially you on the floor. Mo, I want a total lockdown. Nobody in or out, apart from me, of course. I needed to get back into the gallery, but a familiar figure was guarding the door. It was Sergeant Mu. Our paths had crossed before. Sergeant Mu, we meet again. Aha, Madame Collard. An unexpected pleasure. I was in the gallery at the time of the theft. Can I get back in? I am sorry, but I am under strict orders from Inspector Nave. Uh, nobody in, uh, nobody out. And I must correct you, Madame. It is no longer just a theft. It is a murder. Mon Dieu! That poor man! Who is Inspector Nave? Ah, the most promising young investigator on the force. A genius! A man blessed with almost superhuman insight. He sounds highly perspicacious. Madame, it is not for us to talk about the Inspector's sweaty proclivities. He is about to solve his third case in as many days. So, what's he got that the other investigators don't have? Blood spatter. He is the world expert. He reads the entrails of the crime scene like a book. Here's my press card. Do you have a statement for the paper? Yes, madam. Stay away from the crime scene and let the police do their job. And always leave a light on when you go out at night. I really need to get into the gallery and speak to Inspector Nave. Tut-tut! He is not to be disturbed. He is applying 
his famous scientific methods. Any moment now, the case will be cracked. I certainly hope so. I am dog-tired and want to go home. Why are you so tired, Sergeant Mu? I have been working for three days with no rest. Nave is a genius in his field, and he assumes that we all have his energy and vigor. Oh, you poor man. If you'd like to go and get some sleep, I will watch the door for you. That's very thoughtful of you. Ha! A cunning attempt to make me a deserter, madame. A gendarme never leaves his post. Well, how about a hot drink? Ah, that would do the trick for sure. Unfortunately, I mustn't drink on duty. My doctor specifically warned me against it after the last... Uh, incident. That incident you mentioned, what happened exactly? I don't want to talk about it. All I can say is, it was very... unfortunate. I am on duty, and I need to focus. Thanks a lot, Sergeant Mu. You Madame. Bonjour, Monsieur. Whatever it is you want, we are closed. Then why are you standing here? You would not understand, Madame. Try me. Because I look at you, and I know you are like all the others. The others? The pretty women who shop, who gossip, who have their spa days, their almond croissant. Uh, that bad, huh? <laughs> and the men with their grooming products, and their shiny shoes, and their skinny suits who come to my cafe and ask me for... lattes, macchiatos, frappe. I see your point. Is this what we fought on the barricades for, madame? Ripped up the paving slabs, bled on the streets. Isn't it? No, madame, it is not. We fought for ideas, for philosophy, for freedom, equality, fraternity. Vive la revolution. And do you know what drove us on as we fought? What fueled the streets of Paris in that glorious spring? What made our hearts soar? Uh, cheap wine and free sex? No, madame, no! It was French Café Noir that inspired us. The simple demitas, The black, sweet taste of freedom. So that's why you closed? Yes, madame. I serve only thinkers, philosophers, revolutionaries. And you, madame, with your polite top and your pointy ears, and none of those things. This is a cafe. Yes. To the right people. On any other day, I would have given this guy a straight one to the chin. But there was a chance he could help me get into the gallery. Here's my press card. La liberté. Madame, you are not the person that I took you to be. You must accept my deepest, my most profound apologies. Well, of course I accept. But why? La liberté. The great journal of freedom. At the height of the battle, as the tear gas blew and the blood flowed, it was la liberté which carried the voice of our revolution to the world. I know now that you are not the kind of woman who would ask me for almond croissant. You are a true daughter of France, and I am your humble servant. Monsieur. The road to enlightenment is a long one, madame. Could we have a little chat? Any time, madame. How about some coffee? For you, madame, of course. There is only one coffee that I can serve you. Black, strong, and in a tiny cup. One moment.
Here is your coffee, madame. Thank you, monsieur. The coffee was hot and strong. Would you make me a coffee to go? For a fellow revolutionary? Of course, madame. One moment. Here's your takeaway coffee, madame. Thank you, monsieur. Sergeant Mou, I brought you a coffee. Coffee? Fantastic. Just what I need. But wait. I must not. My little p p p problem. I'm sure one little cup of coffee won't hurt. I'm tempted, madame, but I cannot risk it. I am sorry. So, this incident, it involved you, some coffee, and your little problem? It is a tale of woe, madame. I'm all ears, Sergeant. Well, since you seem quite understanding, I shall elaborate. Please do. I was in charge of canine security for the President himself. Uh, one day, en vacances, he went for a private discussion with a lady minister. I stayed alone with his dog, but I had drunk a coffee to stay awake, and nature came to call. So I tied the dog to a tree and went for a secret pee-pee. When I came back, the dog was having a liaison dangereux with the lady minister's terrier. But how did they find out? Well, two months later, the president's Labrador gave birth to six beautiful mongrels. And I was busted to sergeant just after the president's divorce came through. You are a victim of a great injustice, sergeant. You think so? But of course. You knew you must not fall asleep at your post. You were guarding the president himself. Well, the president's dog. Ah, it was the same thing. Yes. I suppose. And by drinking that coffee, you made the ultimate sacrifice for our glorious republic, your career. Mm. How you put it like that? And now France is calling you again. She is saying, drink, Sergeant Mou, drink! She is? She is. Drink or fall asleep at your post. Which is it to be? I suppose it is drink. Bravo, Sergeant. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Excuse me, madame. I must use the petit gendarme's room. It has gone straight through me. Could you watch the gallery door for me? Oh, you can count on me, Sergeant. I distracted Mu. It was now or never. How did you get past Sergeant Mu? Huh. Well, you won't fool me so easily, Madame. I shall question you later. Nico, am I glad to see you. I managed to grab a couple of photos, but the guy got away. Poor Henri is dead. I know. Why kill him? I've been trying to find out. Turns out the alarm was tampered with. It looks to me like an inside job. So, 
No ordinary robbery. And no ordinary painting. The priest claims that La Maledizio is evil. I need to get into the office and see what the CCTV has to offer. So, what's the problem? The inspector's watching me like a hawk. I'll never get in without some sort of distraction. I'll see what I can do. Inspector Nabe, do you have a moment? My time is of the essence. Be quick now. I suppose this is quite a complex case, Inspector. It is a robbery gone bad. Nothing more, nothing less. Surely there's a bit more to it than that. Please abstain from baseless conjecture, madame. The victim's body paints a simple picture, more reliable than any witness statement. Consider the impact of the bullet and note the concomitant lack of blood. A casual homicide, nothing more. Don't you find it odd that the thief chose that one particular painting? Life is full of odd things, madame. Fingerless gloves, white dog poo-poo, nasal hair. I prefer to concern myself with murder. Did you see the alarm was sabotaged? I have interrogated the crime scene, madame. I am fully aware of the disabled security. I prefer biological evidence to the merely circumstantial. Body parts, blood, important things. Don't you think the disabled alarm is highly suspicious, though? The forensic team will be along shortly. Voice your concerns to them. Do not bother me with this circumstantial flifflaff. Why don't you check out the security camera footage? Madame, that is not my area of expertise. It is the body which concerns me. But the CCTV footage is evidence. It could help identify the killer. Correction, madame. It is but an indicator. The only true evidence is bodily fluid. Unless you know something I don't, then please leave me be. The only evidence Inspector Nave seemed to appreciate involved gore. What do you think about the American, Georges? He is deeply suspicious. Thanks, Inspector. I'll let you know if I remember anything else. If I was going to distract Nave, I needed to unearth new evidence or concoct some. And the bloodier, the better. At least now the place was a little tidier. The tomato sauce had splattered on the floor. No way was I going to clean that up with my bare hands. I scraped up the chewing gum with my press card, hoping the inspector wouldn't notice. Inspector! Yes? Have you seen that stain on the floor by the door? What do you think it is? I don't have time to waste discussing domestic hygiene. Please, leave me to my work. Do you want this chewing gum? Madame, I do not take bribes. 
Do you really think this is a cut and dried case? En effet, cut, dried, sealed and delivered. Thanks, Inspector. How about that for a distraction? Inspector! Yes? Have you seen the stain on the floor over there? It looks like blood. Indeed. How very curious. I must investigate immediately, before one of these idiots steps in it. Hmm, interesting. Maybe it is time to employ the machine. Okay, Georges, that should distract him for a while. Nice work, Nico. I'll let you know what I find in the office. I was sure the inspector hadn't seen me slip away, but I needed to be quick, because it wouldn't take him long. At last, Sobard. Sorry, Mr. Rickenbacker. I, I've been busy. Yeah, I damn well hope so. I'm watching the news. Oh, uh, anything interesting? Yeah, someone stole a painting. Oh, really? And it was one you insured. What's going on? Ah, uh, yes. Well, the guy was armed, sir. So? You think I should have thrown myself in front of the thief? Wrestled him to the ground? Got myself shot? Sure would have made me feel better. Anyway, find that painting, or give me a good reason not to pay out. Please tell me that you have some leads. I'm working on it. The statue was jaunty. Up close and personal, I could see that the fig leaf was hinged. Thankfully, there was no one around to see me do this. Very interesting. I wasn't going to open the safe without the key. I was fairly sure that even Henri wouldn't be silly enough to keep it hidden in the office. In the trash can, I found a crumpled letter from Henri's credit card company, demanding immediate payment. It listed extravagant purchases from a variety of ladies' fashion stores. The address indicated that Henri lived in the chic and expensive 16th arrondissement of Paris. I decided to put the letter back. Henri's financial problems weren't my business. But now I knew where he lived. The CCTV system was ancient. It took individual shots and recorded them to tape. It looked like I needed to enter a passcode to view the recording. Hmm. I needed to find a four-digit number. The poster advertised a 1975 Stockholm Music Festival, headlined by a group called the Hairy Lobsters. An hmm. The calendar looked like a child's school project. Henri had ringed 27th May and scrawled birthday. Poor guy hadn't quite made it to his big day. I rewound the tape to before the robbery. This was the first interesting frame. It was Henri studying La Maledictio. 
he couldn't have had any idea what was about to happen. Was only studying that picture, or did he look worried? There was definitely more to this robbery than I first thought. The image was a little fuzzy, but in the center of the painting was what looked like a snake eating its own tail. I thought about what the priest said. There was definitely something unsettling about the picture. Nico and I were taking a look at La Maledicio just before the robbery. Funny, the painting didn't strike me as remarkable at the time, just odd. A good view of La Maledicio. I could kind of see why Father Simeon thought it was evil. There was a certain presence about it. The killer caught in the act. There was nothing really distinctive about him. The CCTV had caught the killer in the act of lifting La Maledicio from the wall. He knew exactly which painting to take. The moment it all went horribly wrong. Why hadn't Henri backed down when the thief pulled the gun? If that was me, I'd have done whatever the guy wanted. There was some writing on the front of his helmet, but I couldn't quite make it out. The alarm should have sounded when the killer took the painting, but it had been sabotaged. I wondered who could have done that. Maybe Lane or even Henri himself. The killer making his getaway. A logo on the front of his helmet read Waterloo Motors. That could be useful. The painting was gone. There I was, taking a look at the alarm box. Hopefully I didn't look too suspicious. That was me. The alarm should have sounded. I hadn't thought about that when I was taking a look at the camera. Hmm, not my best angle. That was the last shot. I'd probably learned everything I could from the CCTV. That was the...